I mentioned that uh, episodic volunteering is huge today. And I say, good, let's capitalize on it. Let's look at the 79% of people in the United States that says, hey, I would volunteer if I knew that there was just some short thing that I could do. Uh, I was in Ar Arkansas last week, and I was visiting with a young man. You meet people when you travel. And he says, what are you doing here? And I says, well, Arkansas is having a statewide convention on volunteerism. And they've asked me to deliver the keynote and teach a workshop, so I'm here for that. And he lit up, and he goes, oh, I'm volunteering tomorrow. And it was kind of interesting because I kind of wondered about I said, so Bob, what are you doing? And, he, he, and I, as I talked to him, I realized that the guy had never volunteered before in his life. This is a brand new experience. And this is what he told me. He says, well, he says, I got a speeding ticket. And so I have to do community service. He says, I have some 40 hours I have to do. So I said, what are you doing, Bob? And he says, you know, it's been kind of cool. He says, I, I go to this... Uh, 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 nonprofit organizations and they have me drive out and pick up furniture and stuff in the home that's going to go to this thrift store. So they give me a van, I drive out, I don't speed, but I drive out and I pick up all the furniture, I come back and I deliver it. And I sensed an enthusiasm, I sensed an excitement, just watched his eyes and I says, Bob, you're really enjoying it, aren't you? And he goes, you know, I really am. I says, you think you'll continue? And it's like he had never even thought of it. He goes, I guess I could. He says, you know, my girlfriend, he was probably in his 40s, and he says, my girlfriend, she works on the next two days, and he says, I have Tuesday and Thursday off, and he says, I could sit home and watch reruns on TV, or I could go pick up this stuff. And I says, Bob, if I was the executive director, if I was the head of that organization, you and I would be having coffee next week. We go to Starbucks. In fact, in our book, we call it the dating method of recruiting. You don't ask for marriage on a first date. It's like the woman who stands up in church and says, I'm looking for a husband. Anybody interested? Meet me in the foyer. That's how we recruit at our meetings. Hey, we're looking for these volunteers, and people are scared to death. And I go, don't do that. Just get next to somebody. My son ran an after-school program, and, and because of his dynamic personality, or his mother would say because of those McKee jeans, he had 200 kids coming you know, just overnight to this after-school program, and he obviously realized, hey, I can't do this alone, I need volunteers. So you know what he did? He made a list of potential volunteers, a lot of college students, and he would go to them and he would just say, hey, you know what I want you to do? Could you come help me serve ice cream, a first date? Just come and serve ice cream. And then while they were serving ice cream, he'd slip up next to them and he'd start to talk, and he says, let me tell you about Sophie over there. Let me, and he began to talk about some of the kids and some of the kids that he got to know. And it was exciting to watch Jonathan as he built relationships. And he and I talk about it. That's why we wrote it. He and I wrote the book together on, on this, we call it the dating method of recruiting. Give them a taste. Why? What do you want on your first date? Hopefully, is a second date. And by the way, the reason I like that is sometimes I don't want that volunteer back. You know what I mean? I don't ask them. We call them VDPs, very draining people. You know, and so we don't want them back there. And so if you're dating, it's great. <laughs>